What's up guys, welcome to Jew Whiskey, I'm Jeff. This is a channel where I offer my thoughts and opinions on a specific whiskey and every once in a while I throw in other whiskey related content. Today I've got a list for you guys. We're going over 10 whiskey brands that my patrons do not buy, they avoid them. So we're getting a little bit negative today, but it's gonna be an interesting one. Stick around. Okay, so it's another patron-fueled list today. This time we're going over 10 brands, 10 whiskey brands that my patrons avoid. Now, initially, I asked them to tell me what brands they hate, but then a few of them reached out to me, and rightly so, they said hate is too strong of a word. Still putting it in the thumbnail, though. You gotta think about those clicks. I'll hail the algorithm. So yeah, not necessarily hate, but brands they avoid, brands they don't buy, brands that are not very interesting to them. And keep in mind, this list only applies to OBs or original bottlings which is to say bottles put out by the brands themselves. No IBs here, no independent bottles. Now, if you do get into the world of IBs or independent bottles, I think you'll find that a lot of the brands that you would typically be dismissive of are actually capable of making fantastic whiskeys. They just don't, which is a, it's a baffling choice to make, but a lot of brands do make it. A lot of the brands here are here because they have weak specs, which is to say maybe under 46% ABV, maybe colored, maybe chill filtered, maybe all three. Uh, but that's not the only reason why a brand might show up here. Maybe people don't like the pricing, maybe people don't like the marketing, or maybe they just fundamentally don't like the flavors here. Uh, there's a lot of reasons why people might be turned off by a certain brand. For each brand that shows up on the list, I'll put up a picture of the brand's most popular bottle, and that is based on zero research, so it may not be their most popular bottle, but it's what I think their most popular bottle is, which is one of the perks of having your own YouTube channel. You can just do shit. Now keep in mind, this is not my list. Had I done my own list, it would be different, although there would definitely be some overlap here. But no, these all were brands chosen through a voting system by my patrons. So if you're gonna blame anyone, you should blame those wonderful, generous, and ridiculously good-looking people. Anyway, that is the whole premise. Uh, as usual, guys, I do have a mystery pour in my glass here. This one is a pour from one of the three brands that tied in 11th place on this list. So after the list, I'll tell you what's in my glass, what brand it's from, and what the other two brands were that tied with it for 11th place. Couple surprises in there, so it should be interesting. Uh, but yeah, let's not waste any more time. Let's jump into our list. In the meantime, if you'll kindly leave a like down below, that would be greatly appreciated. Okay, so at the back of this list, coming in at number 10, we have one that I don't buy much from myself, and that brand is Glenrothes. Now, interestingly, in the 380 plus reviews that I've done on this channel, I have never reviewed a single bottle from Glenrothes, and I don't even think they've ever showed up on lists. These guys are in that zone where they don't get, like, hated on, but they don't get love either. They just don't get much attention at all. Uh, it's one of those brands that I think most enthusiasts are just kind of apathetic about, for better or for worse. So if you're a fan of this brand or if you think there's a bottle I should check out, let me know down below in the comments. But yeah, generally speaking, I'm in the same camp as most people. Just not a brand that I care much about and they're not really on my radar. So they come in at number 10, Glenrothes. Coming in at number nine, we have one of the best selling single malts in the entire world. This one is Balveni. Now, unlike Glenrothes, this is not a brand that people are apathetic about. A lot of people talk about this one but it's very divisive. Because even among enthusiasts, some people love it, some don't. This is a brand that is often expensive with lower ABVs, added color, and obviously that's not gonna help win us over. But oppositely, a lot of people do love it. They love the house style, they're willing to pay for it, and they do have some whiskeys that are craft presented or at the very least, 46% or higher. So again, a divisive brand, not something everybody can agree on, but one that certainly a good chunk of my patrons would prefer to avoid, which is understandable. Comes in at number nine, Balvenie. Number eight is Tom and Tool, and I'll be honest, I have had a few of them, I've tried a few of them, but this is probably the brand on this list that I have the least amount of experience with. I think I've only ever owned one bottle from them, that was their peated release, it was fine. Uh, they just aren't a brand that ever really stood out to me. Maybe I should explore them more, so again, if you have any like comments, suggestions, or ideas about what I should try from the brand, you can let me know down below, but for now, it's just something that's never really impressed or interested me and apparently a lot of my patrons feel the same so it comes in at number eight tom and tool 
At number seven, we've got another big one. In fact, this is the biggest brand on this list if you're talking like international sales. This one's Glenfiddich, and this is another one that just makes perfect sense because they do the classic big brand thing. So low ABVs, colored, chill filtered. And like a lot of other brands out there, this is a frustrating one because even though it's not my favorite house style, I do think Glenfiddich has a good house style, but they're wasting much of their potential. Now, obviously they like money, they're an established big brand. So from a business perspective, it does make sense to go for broader appeal, mass appeal. So I can't really blame them for that, but yes, I can. And so can my patrons, Glenfiddich, it's number seven. Coming in at number six, we've got a brand that I definitely did expect to see on this list. Their older stuff is really expensive, it's for collectors. Meanwhile, their affordable, available range is something that people don't like. I am of course talking about Bowmore here, and again, wasted potential, uh, low ABV, colored, blah blah blah, and really I just think the issue with their core range is, aside from the weak specs, they're just not putting in that much effort. It could be better, it should be better. Personally, I am a big fan of the Bowmore House style. I think it's one of Isla's more unique distillates. I really like the 18 year old, but of course at 18 years old, it's prohibitively priced. Uh, if you look at stuff like the 12 year old, that should be the bottle that's winning people over and it isn't. Stuff like the 10s, the 12s, the 15s, for me, they're not terrible and the price isn't crazy, but they're also not very interesting. To be honest, they're somewhat low effort. Uh, so I'm not impressed and clearly my patrons are not very impressed either. So this one comes in at number six. Bowmore. Number five, Akintoshin, another brand that is not doing much. Now, unlike Bowmore, which I think is untapped potential, uh, Akintoshin, I can't say I've ever had a really good Akintoshin. They're all average to below average. For a lot of enthusiasts, this brand personifies boring, generic whiskey, lacking in character, too much cask influence, too much added color. Uh, and yes, a lot of you are going to say the IBs are better. You'd be right. The IBs are better. You could say that for pretty much any brand on this list. But for today, we're talking about the OB range and the OB range has not impressed my patrons and it's not impressed me either. So it comes in at number five, Akintoshin. Number four is Aberfeldy, yet another brand that is famous for its weak specs. Now, this is not an obscure brand. I think a lot of people know about Aberfeldy. A lot of people have tried Aberfeldy. And at least in my city, there's a lot of like ads out around whiskey shops. So an effort is being made to get the brand's name out there. This is yet another brand that's going for mass appeal. Obviously, 40% whiskeys are not going to be interesting for most enthusiasts, but I think the majority of people who are out at clubs or at KTVs, singing rooms, they would describe it as smooth and easy drinking, which is a market. It's a demographic. It's a big demographic that a lot of brands are trying to get in on, and Aberfeldy is among them, which is why they're at number four. All right, so we made it to the top three. Bottom three. Whatever. This is another brand that absolutely had to show up on this list. It's McKellen. And not much to say here. I think we all know the deal. These guys give us weak specs. They're overpriced. They're made to be premium collectibles. And oftentimes the whiskeys themselves are quite unimpressive. Now, I do like the house style, but I mean, we don't need to get into it. We all know what's up. Comes in at number three, McAllen. Coming in at number two, we've got another obvious one, or really the top five on this list are all pretty obvious. You would expect them to show up on a list like this. Number two is Dalmore. This is another one that is often just overpriced for what you're getting. So it's the usual complaints, high prices, sub 46% ABVs, chill filtration, and color. Now, Dalmore in particular gets laughed at a lot for the color thing because a lot of brands use caramel colorant, but Dalmore uses a lot. Personally, I do like this brand. I think they make good whiskey. I think they have excellent cask play and I even like the bottle, which obviously doesn't count for anything. Uh, but when it comes to their specs, when it comes to their prices, I'm with you guys, I'm on board. It absolutely makes sense that they would show up on this list. My patrons have it at number two. So there we go, Dalmore. Okay, so for number one, you might have guessed it by now. This is a brand that a lot of people they're just completely dismissive of and they laugh at them. Whereas brands like McAllen get full on hate and Dalmore to a lesser extent, people are just, they just think this one's silly. This one's Jura. 
This is another brand from White and Mackay who also own Dalmore. And this is a brand that has a reputation for just being very underwhelming whiskey and they've earned it. Because beyond just having weak specs, the whiskey itself is bland and uneventful. Now, I don't know how well Jura is selling. Somebody out there is buying it. It's certainly not enthusiasts, but I don't know what those numbers look like. Maybe they're good. Um, maybe they're good. Either way, Jura has somehow established itself as the laughing stock of the enthusiast community. I've seen a lot of people kind of trash talking it. I've seen memes about it. It's just not one that gets any respect at all, uh, which is probably why it comes in at number one. So there we go. Jura, you could probably do better. Okay, that was the list, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I apologize if we came off a little bit too negative today, but I did have a little bit of fun with this, I will admit. And on that note, I want to hear from you guys. So what are some brands out there that you have zero interest in, that you avoid, that you would just never consider for purchasing? Definitely looking forward on this one to seeing what you guys put down below in the comments. And uh, finally, if you stuck around to find out what the mystery part in my glass is, I am drinking... Lefroig. Lefroig Karch is to be specific, but that doesn't really matter. Lefroig showed up in the 11th spot on this list, which, I mean, a lot of you probably already know that I'm not the biggest Lefroig fan. Uh, I'm warming up to them, but I definitely don't love them. But even for me, 11th place, that's harsh. So that kind of surprised me, and so did another one of the brands that tied for 11th place, because we did have Lefroig, but alongside them, we also had Glen Murray and Aberlauer. Now, for me, Glen Murray makes sense here, but Aberlauer? Didn't see that one coming either. So a very interesting list today that my patrons put together with a few surprises on it, but I guess that's the fun of it. Uh, and that brings us to the end of today's video, guys. So thank you so much for watching. If you want to help out, I do a Patreon and PayPal listed down below. And I guess we'll see you next time. Bye, guys.